Hello, dear friends. Welcome to another program here at Card Deck Radio talking about the Spiritist magazine. Remember, if we haven't met before, my name is Shane Martin. I am here with you every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, broadcasting from Central Virginia in the United States of America. Welcome. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be with you. And tonight, we're going to be talking about issue 46, published about this time last year, July of 2019. And the title of the article is Challenges of the Intelligent Individual on the Earth, written by a psychologist named Claudio Sinotti. And before we start, we're going to invite you for an initial prayer for us to attune with the good spirit. So if you're kind enough to join me, close your eyes. Repeat the words of the prayer mentally. Dear Mother, Father God, tonight we pray that we are able to receive your loving and kindness, that we are able to perceive the presence of our good spirit with us. We pray, dear Lord, that we are humble to open our hearts and minds to your teachings. Dear Lord, we thank you for this blessed opportunity of being together, nourishing our souls. We pray that all of those around us in both realms feel your loving presence, those who are able and ready to receive help in the spiritual realm. May their guardian angels, their therapists, nurses, and physicians take them to hospitals and areas of healing and rest may those whose hearts are still hardened and still do not know of you may they also be helped may their guardian angels be able to reach each and every one of them helping them whatever they are dear god we ask you for your protection we ask you for your inspiration and with your guidance we begin our studies today and so be it dear friends thank you so much for joining me today we're going to talk about issue 46 of the spiritist magazine the title the article is titled challenges of the intelligent individual on the earth and it's authored by claudio sinotti who is a psychologist and this is one part of the spiritist magazine that is titled joanna de angelis spiritist psychology as you're going to see me moving around this is what the Spiritist magazine looks like. No frills. I always read to you with no frills. And usually I read it from my tablet. This is what the app looks like. It's a beautiful production. And as you go by and you move around, you can choose the pages you want to read. In this case, that's what the article we're going to read looks like. Isn't it beautiful? The good spirits are really working really hard with each and every one of us, with from the editors to the writers to the graphic designers, and we are all together. And usually I read from directly from the app that you can get if you visit the spiritist spiritismagazine.org. You can download the PDF for your computer, or you can also download the app and you can order the spiritist magazine physical copy as well if you want to have it it's a great resource a lot of these articles and these topics are published in the spiritist magazine first time in english before they come to fruition in a form of a book so it's first-hand knowledge in the english language and that's why it's important for us to bring it to you here at the spiritist magazine and here we have i'm going to read the article to you and we're going to come back and make a couple of comments here we go. The spiritual principle has a long evolutionary trajectory from the simplest to the most complex of forms with plenitude as its goals. Put it here. This journey was well summarized by Leon Denise, who stated, quote, in the plant, intelligence sleeps, in the animal, it dreams 
Only in man does it awaken, come to know itself on itself and become conscious. From this summary, we can see human beings face four great challenges in the development of consciousness. Awakening, know yourself, take ownership, and becoming aware. Number one, awakening. When one's consciousness <clears throat> is asleep, the individual is driven by instinct, not able to assess the innumerable possibilities it has at its fingertips. Dominated by instinct, it seeks pleasure at all costs, even if it requires brutality to do so. This can be seen daily as acts of violence, as well as excesses of all kinds. They reflect the self-destructive behavior of those who do not yet know the potential of the soul. Awakening the conscience becomes urgent because lack of action at this stage generates personal and collective suffering, which could be avoided if individuals invested more in self-awareness. Number two, know yourself. To leave the sleep stage is imperative to know and develop self-awareness. To observe one's behavior, critically assess one's actions, and especially make an effort to change one's attitudes towards life. Turning inward through mechanisms such as prayer, reflection, and meditation helps us to come into contact with ourselves. We can only change what we know and we can only change ourselves as we develop self-awareness. Three, take ownership. The more one knows, the more one can manage one's impulses, emotions, desires, complexes, and so many other elements that affect the human soul. Taking ownership is essential to exercise self-control. This is the attitude of somebody who knowing their life is far beyond the control of the ego, seeks a state of balance and harmony to best deal with existential challenges. Number four, becoming aware. They who awaken, know themselves, and take ownership of themselves, start to become conscious of their existence. Becoming aware, in the broad sense, reflects a great degree of commitment to, the, to oneself, commitment to others, to the environment, and to life, to nature, and to God. Life is calling urgently for a change in our actions, and intelligence is our weapon. Once considered to be restricted to only of those who are able to solve complex equations, today it seems much more broadly by behavioral sciences. It's not enough to know how to solve equations, the intellectual quotient or IQ, because while an individual cannot decipher their own meanings, they continue to act in an unintelligent way in relation to life. It is not enough to know one's emotions or EI, emotional intelligence, but essentially to transform their awareness into a love of life. In addition, it's not enough to identify ourselves as spirit, since as for long as this consciousness is not present in all our actions on the earth, we will not live the plenitude that is our destiny. It is not enough to have information and knowledge. This knowledge must be put to the best of use to benefit life. The source of this article is from this journal of psychological studies issue 64 if you go to www.spiritistps.org you should be able to find the journal of psychological studies claudio sinori is a clinical psychologist in brazil and as a spiritist he has been leading the psychological studies of the works by joana de angelis through the books 
psychographed by Divaldo Franco. All right, let's take all a deep breath and start our reflections. Now that we had time to go through the article, let's go back and talk about the article itself. It's always good for us to read it and then we're invited to reflect upon the teaching. So here he's bringing us four challenges or four stages of human, the development of the consciousness. One is awakening. The other one is knowing ourselves. The other one is taking ownership. And the fourth one is becoming aware. So I think the question here is, where are we in those development? What kind of stages are we finding ourselves? And of course, we are complex beings. We are multimillionaire souls. And we are invited for re daily reflection. And in some aspects of our lives, we'll be in certain stages. In other aspects, we'll be in other stages. But as a human, living in a human kingdom, as a spirit incarnated on the earth, a spirit that is progressing and evolving through time, that will continue to evolve after the death of the physical body who was evolving before we reincarnated. We're invited nowadays, not only through the Spiritist doctrine, but also through the other doctrines as well. There is an explosion of the development of consciousness on the earth. And he's saying here, the first stage of awakening is when someone's consciousness is asleep, this person is driven by instincts. So it's unable to access the innumerable possibilities that we have. So you and I have innumerable possibilities and potentialities to develop. But we are in an, an, an unaware state. We are awakening. So we kind of open ourselves to know of our potentialities. We go from dominating, being dominated by instinct, seeking pleasure at all costs, but to a state where we are starting to become aware and awakening of the conscience becomes urgent. Because if you're only driven by instinct, you're going to wake up, you're going to brush your teeth, you're going to have breakfast, you're going to drive to work, you're going to engage on the situations at work, you're going to drive back home, you're going to come to your family, you're going to sleep, and so on. You're going to repeat. There's no time for awakening of consciousness. And some people in that stage may be... Um, be driven to acts of violence, brutality, excesses of all kinds. So we are, they are unable, they engage in those behaviors as a fulfillment of basic needs of life, but they don't have time to engage in self-reflection. The second stage is know yourself, according to Claudio Sinotti, which is the stage where you leave the sleep state and it starts to develop self-awareness. And when you are developing self-awareness, of what are we talking about? So, for example, we broadcast this at night. So today, this is the day you're watching this, regardless of what day it is of the month or which year it is. Think about all you've done throughout the day. Set aside some time, even if it's five minutes every night, to take accounts of your actions. And then every day, make an effort to throughout the day, Maybe for the next week, every night, you make an account of your reactions and you reflect. Was it good? Was it not so good? Did I um, dwell in evil? Did I dwell in good? Did I hurt myself? Did I hurt others? And next day, and you forgive yourself. You're more aware. You're no, getting to know yourself. And next day, you engage. And then maybe in the second week, you try to do it in the middle of the day, by noon when you have lunch, and then at night. And the best times to do that kind of exercise and self-awareness exercises the times that we were normally be mindlessly eating while browsing social media for example so take your time during lunch time you have half an hour 15 minutes you focus on eating alone or eat, eating only chewing digesting the food savoring the food the next 10 minutes you engage in some journaling where you take accounts of what has um, happened and the next stage you go and brush your teeth and go back to work for example. So these are very simple ways where you can break down breaks and may be very proactive and very mindful of your time management so you can be aware of some of those things. So when you turn inwardly on the second stage of knowing yourself, we could do that, that kind of exercises. And then you come in contact with yourself. 
and he's um, recommending turning inwardly with mecha through mechanisms such as prayer. We do prayer before and after we studies, reflection and meditation. So you need to be able to just sit with yourself in silence and go into reflection. Forgive yourself, realize that you are a work in progress, work on what needs to work, and then you start to develop self-awareness. The next stage will be taking ownership. The next challenge is to take ownership. Now that you left a state of sleep, fulfilling instincts and physical needs, to a stage where you engage in self-reflection, meditation, prayer, then you go into taking ownership and you own your actions, your impulses, your emotions, your desires, so that you are aware how those things affect you. And then in, in terms of taking ownership, that's important according to Claudius Nauti, is that you, you own your actions and you take self-control. So next day, when you realize that certain situations trigger your anger, certain situations trigger um, I are certain situations trigger joy when you encounter those situations remember life is going to bring to us circumstances for you and I to be aware of the things we need to work on we didn't come to the earth to take vacations 24 7 we came here to improve ourselves we came here to serve one another so then you're going to be encountering the same circumstance over and over again just as if you're taking the curriculum in school until you pass that course and then once you, you say, okay, that situation triggers me anger, you're able to stop, you take self-control, and then you are one step ahead. You're not just following the instincts of anger and rebulking and attacking back. You step back, you go inwardly, you reflect, you take ownership. The fourth challenge is becoming aware. Those who are awake and know themselves and take ownership of themselves start to become conscious of their existence. And that's what we want to do. We only have 80 to 100 years on this lifetime. If we're lucky to be that long, live that long here based on our circumstances. So we want to use every minute of our time not to just indulge in sleep mode behaviors, fulfilling instincts and physical needs, but to moments of reflection, moments of self-awareness, moments of self-control. We want to acquire knowledge, we have, want to have experiences, we want to take care of ourselves and our families and our loved ones and our co-workers and the whole of humanity. But we also want to progress and contribute to the whole good. And here is, he's saying, becoming aware in a broad sense reflects a great degree of commitment to your own self, commitment to others, commitment to the environment, committing to life, to nature and to God. And then you are you become self-aware you can self-control you are aware of this the importance of this time 80 years you want to get to the end of it fulfilling your reincarnatory plan you want to go to the spiritual realm because remember we don't transform overnight into angels it's a daily process nothing in nature is go through big leaps then when we wake up in the spiritual realm after having lived as many years as is allotted to us here, we want to be a more self-aware individual when we come back. We don't want to have regret and guilt because we wasted those opportunities. And if in the past you and I have wasted opportunities, forgive yourself and today move on. And he's saying here, it's not enough to know, have knowledge, to know all of these and to read the Spiritist magazine. These are beautiful articles. They're short they're concise, they can be used in your gospel at home. Another way you can reflect <clears throat> throughout the work of the week is to sit with your family once a week at the same time. All devices off, no uh, connectivity, just you and your family. You pray, you read a message, you make comments on the message, and then you reflect. You can talk about your, your week and how that message <clears throat> how this message applies to your life, the things that happen to you, the things that, that happen to your family. And then now you're becoming self-aware as a group. So the work always is start within us. Later he says here, it's not enough to know, you have to also take control of your emotions, have IQ, intelligence, quotients to EI, emotional intelligence, but we need to transform their awareness for love into a love of life. It's not enough to have knowledge 
and information. That knowledge must be put to the best of use to benefit life, life in general, your life, the life of your loved ones, the life of your family, the life of your community, the life of the animals, the life of the plants, the life of the planet. Because remember, we are vibratory beings, we are multidimensional beings. And ultimately, if you go down to the least bit of what your, your physical body is made out of, atoms, atoms are electrons and protons together. We are vibratory beings, we have our spirit developed by our parent spirit that is connected to the physical body, we have our spiritual companions. We have our spirit guides, we have our spirit friends, or frenemies, we have all of humanity. Seven billion of incarnates have the same type of relationship. So if we all start to go from instinct to sleep state to aware states where we are going from physical needs to self-reflection, meditation and prayer to awareness and application, that's why we're here. We are here to take that half an hour, 20 minutes together to read, reflect, pray and apply the teachings to our daily lives. Isn't that beautiful? I hope you enjoy this moment with the Spiritist Magazine. Remember, it's as easy as download the app into your devices. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, write to us, put down in the comment what kind of work you're doing in self-reflection today. Connect with Kardec Radio, get in touch with your Spiritist Society at your location, write subscribe like share let's make sure the good news of the masters gets spread all throughout humanity and again my name is shane martin i'm your host for the spiritist magazine as to cap up and bring ourselves together we are gonna i'm gonna invite you for a prayer remember you can always have a water bottle with you so the mentors can magnetize the water for you big water bottle little water bottle for your family members and friends as well Close your eyes if, it, if it's safe for you to do so and repeat the words of the prayer mentally with me. Dear Mother, Father God, we thank you for the opportunity of being in this lifetime. We thank you for the presence of our family members and friends in both realms of life. We pray that tonight we are able to become self-aware, that all this knowledge we have acquired serve as basis for our actions and our attitudes and our thoughts. We hope that we can better connect with our guardian angels and spiritual guides, and we pray for all of humanity, a development of our consciousness and awareness, so that we may all progress and evolve together. We ask you for your protection, we ask you for your guidance, and with your permission, we end our studies today, and so be it. Dear friends, what a blessed day, what a blessed night. Again, my name is Shane Martin. We have our program with the Spiritist Magazine every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until then, until next week, God willing, many, many blessings.